Now, I've been racking my brains on how to make this video without it coming across like a huge advert because essentially that's what it is. But essentially I've been sent quite a few parcels here which contain my new wheels from Light Bicycle. If you're new to the channel, then Light Bicycle have been my carbon rim sponsor for the last few years and I couldn't be happier with how they performed. I've taken their 26 inch rim on my street trials bike off 12 foot drops repeatedly in shows and I've taken their mountain bike rims on the streets and to the Alps down double black diamond routes and they've shrugged off everything I've thrown at them. In previous years, Light Bicycle have sent me just rims and then I've built them up into wheels myself. However, this time I actually have fully built wheels from Light Bicycle. Now that's kind of a big deal because I've only ever run my own wheels for the last 15 years. I've not run a single set that someone else has built. So Light Bicycle were super confident in their own builds and they wanted me to put them to the test. Now, before I put the wheels to a riding test, myself and Light Bicycle thought it'd be quite interesting to do a bit of an unboxing and just test the build quality here before I fit them. I want to know how straight the wheels are, how good the tension is, and how good the pre-stressing has been. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna select a few of these wheels, show you what models I've got, put them to the quality test and see if they are up to my standards. I'm gonna start with the smallest of the wheels. This is the RM26C05 and is the 26 inch rim I've been using on my street trials bike for the last, I don't know, four years or so. The only change I wanted for this new rim was a slightly different weave pattern. Previously, I've used a UD weave, which is just a matte finish. Whereas this one, I wanted it to pop a little bit more. So I've gone for their 12K UD finish, which I think looks pretty amazing. Now with this wheel and all the wheels I'm gonna show you, I had some support from Industry9. So I'll be running all of their Hydro Hubs. In this case, it's their single speed model, which I've been using for the last two years, I think. And again, I haven't had any issues and the engagement system is insane. Yeah all the engagements and with all the other wheels we've gone for black spokes and alloy nipples and i'm hopeful that this is going to be a super strong wheel first impressions are that these are really tight spokes i'm actually quite surprised i didn't think wheel builders other than myself went this tight on the spokes so that's off to a really good start the only thing i need to do now is stick this in my new wheel trimming stand thanks very much junior and see how straight and dished this thing is all right, light bicycle, your moment of truth. Let's see how good your wheel builder is. <laughs> Fair play light bicycle, that is straight as an arrow. That is, that's insanely good. Making slight noises there, but the logo is actually ever so proud of the surface. And I think it's just touching that. So that is, I am well impressed. That is as straight as I could ever ask. There is zero egging on that as well. Well impressed, but how is that dish? So get that about there. Is this wheel dished correctly? Yep, spot on. Don't need, I don't need to do a single thing to this. That is insanely straight, insanely well dished, insanely tight, but how even are these spokes. I've got myself a spoke tension meter. Now this hasn't been calibrated for years, so I'm not too worried about how high the numbers are going. What I want to see is just them being about the same. Now I will allow some variables because spokes may have some variables, rims may have some variables, so it's nearly impossible to get them exactly to the right point on every single spoke, but I have a range which I deem acceptable. So let's see if this matches it. So yeah, like I thought, they're not all exactly to the same exact point, but they are well within the range of acceptability. With wheel builds, it's always a compromise because there are variables. You can either go for an exact same tension on every single spoke, but it's likely your wheel won't be straight or you can go for a straight wheel and have just a slight bit of variable in the spoke tension. And to me, that is the better option. And this is spot on. Don't need to do a single thing to that. But how good is their pre-stressing? Pre-stressing is the one thing I think makes the biggest difference to strong wheel builds. If you're not stressing the wheel enough while it's being built, 
then things will bed in as you're riding, come loose, and yeah, you've got a crap wheel. My way of pre-stressing a wheel is quite extreme and some people do cringe when I do it, but what I'm gonna do is put this wheel on the floor and literally stand on the spokes and have a little bit of a jump up and down. Some people will try and stress a wheel by either trying to bend it in their arms, pressing it against the side of a table, or even pressing it on the floor, and I just don't think that is enough. What you're essentially trying to do is bed the harder steel spokes into the softer aluminium of the hub and essentially dent it. And if you're not denting it enough, it will dent when you're riding and that's when you get the loose spokes. Now, some people think that spokes stretch because maybe they've had a wheel that hasn't been pre-stressed enough. They go out riding and they get loose spokes and they think, oh, the spokes have stretched. Spokes don't stretch, otherwise there'd be a crap material for building wheels. It's literally just denting the hub. And if you're not denting the hub enough, you'll get loose spokes. And by stamping on a wheel, that is an extreme dent as you're ever gonna get and hopefully your spokes won't ever come loose. So that's what I'm gonna do and we'll see if these slacken off any and if the tensions change. So let's get this on the floor and punish it a bit. So giving this wheel a bit of a stamp, normally you can kind of tell if the spokes have slacked off some, and I'm not feeling anything. I didn't feel or hear anything weird when I was stamping on it. So I've got high hopes here. I'm gonna stick this back in and see if it's still straight. Here's the test, is it still straight? <laughs> that is actually pretty impressive, you know. That is still very, very straight. I don't think that's even changed at all. Okay, maybe a slight bit there, but that is super impressive. I am well impressed with that. I don't know what technique light bicycle use to pre-stress their wheels, but whatever they do, they've done a good job there. That has hardly budged an inch. Well, it hasn't budged an inch. I reckon that's budged maybe half a millimeter at one point, if that. So, you know what, I don't even need to touch this, but I might just, Bring that bit there. This bit here. Cool, and that is done. That is just hitting the slightly raised logo again. That is straight as an arrow. I am more than happy to run that on my bike without doing anything to it. So I'm not even gonna bother doing anything to the front wheel. And I may come back in a few weeks or a few months and see how that front wheel's holding up, but I'm confident it will hold up absolutely fine. So yeah, well impressed with that. Now this is the smallest wheel. We're gonna go up in sizes. I've got a 27 and a half inch and a 29 inch. It's fairly easy to get these wheels stiff and tight, but the bigger the wheels, the more flexible they're gonna be. So it'll be interesting to see how they hold up. So I'm gonna put this one away. I'm gonna show you what I've got next. 26 ain't dead, and also 27 and a half inch isn't dead either. This is the EN732, and like my 26 inch wheel, this is a 38 mil outer with 32 mil inner. This is going on my kind of just trail, all mountain bike, jibbing bike, which I hope to show you guys soon. I've run these wheels on my previous mountain bike, and yeah, just like I've been saying, haven't had a single issue, even when I was throwing them down the French and Swiss Alps. And again, just like the 26 inch wheel, I've gone for a slightly different 12K UD weave just to make things a little bit more interesting. Now, with this being a bigger wheel, there's more chance of variables and a little bit more chance of it being slightly out of true. So just like the last wheel, I'm gonna stick this on here and see if the bigger wheel size changes anything. Quick spin. This might even be straighter than the last wheel, which makes no sense at all. And again, spoke tensions all feel nice and tight. They don't quite feel as tight as the last wheel, but that wheel is smaller, shorter spokes, and the shorter spokes are always gonna feel a little bit tighter. Whereas, yeah, slightly more give to them, but still super tight, so that's really good. But yeah, I don't, I'm not even gonna touch that. That is absolutely fine. I'm happy with that, but how is the dish? 
app, no issues at all. So again, it passes the trueness and the dish test, but how even are these spoke tensions? I'm not expecting anything too unusual here. If anything, these are actually more even than the 26 inch wheel, but I didn't expect that. It's time to stick this on the floor, give it a good stamping and see if anything changes. Being honest, I did feel a couple of pops when I was standing on that one then. Now it didn't necessarily feel like it was a full bedding in, but it more felt like the spokes were slacking off and just unwinding a bit. Cause sometimes when you get to the higher tensions, the spokes just want to twist rather than actually turn on the threads. So what I essentially did then was relieve some of the pressure, allow the spokes just to kind of pop back. So I don't think I bedded in the hub, but I may see some change just because the spokes may have unwound, well not unwound, but just released some of that twist that they had. So let's stick this back in and see how it looks. Sometimes a carbon rim can be a little bit on the stiff side to physically flex it and release some of that tension, but let's give it a spin, see how it looks. Okay, so there is a slight change there. I have managed to get a bit of movement. I'm not so surprised by that. I don't think this will take long to fix. So I'm gonna see how few turns I can put into this and get it without it rubbing. There we go, that is it sorted. And yeah, I'd be happy to stick that on my bike and give it a ride. But before we do that, let's just see what these tensions are like. I suspect they might be slightly different now, but it's always a compromise, I think. You know what? There's not much change there at all. There's maybe one that's slightly out there if I was being picky. I'd probably add slightly more tension to that, but it's not vital. This wheel will be more than suitable to be fitted to a bike and absolutely punished. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. Just like the 26 inch wheels, I'm not gonna do anything with the front one. I'm just gonna fit it and then in a few months, come back and see if anything has changed. Now I also have a 29 inch version of this, which I'm gonna skip past because it's essentially the same wheel. Now I'm gonna go on to something completely different instead. Now, some of you may have seen me hint that one of my new mountain bikes is an e-bike. Now, Light Bicycle do a specific e-bike rim, so it made sense to get them to build it up into a wheel for me, and this is it. This is the EH935S, and it's the widest rim of any of the rims I've been sent, at 43 mil outer and 35 mil inner. Now I'll be running some fairly chunky tires on the e-bike, so it made sense to get some wider rims to match. But that's not the only thing that makes this unique. It also has a pretty cool wavy pattern going on. Now I don't actually know why they've gone for this wavy design. I probably should have asked them before I did this video, but I think it looks really cool. It's certainly a burly rim and these spoke tensions feel as tight as any of the other wheels. So again, I've got high hopes for this. Let's stick it in and see how it fares up. <laughs> Again, how, do, how are they getting straighter the bigger they're getting? Yeah, whoever's building these wheels at Light Bicycle is doing a pretty damn good job. Well, you know the drill. Let's flip this over and see how the dish is. If I'm being super, super picky, it's probably about half a mil over one direction, but that's well within reason for, for me. I've run my own wheels way out further than that. So I find that very acceptable. And yeah, still, this hub's so loud, still very straight. How are the spoke tensions? That is the next one. Let's get the meter out and have a look. 
pretty consistent and actually surprisingly considering this is the biggest wheel these are also the tightest spokes now, i don't know whether it's just because this rim is the burliest because it's e-bike rated allows you to go for higher tensions but yeah i did not expect that i'm going to pop this on the floor and give it a stamp my predictions are with this being bigger it probably will have the most effect i'll be really surprised if this was still as straight as it is after stamping it again just because i think those spokes are gonna kind of untwist a little bit but we'll see i've been fairly surprised so far moment of truth okay i think we've got a slight bit of movement there it's very rare that you stamp on a wheel and it isn't any movement even with wheels i've built after my stressing if i've completely finished a wheel and i go and stamp on it again it would probably shift by like half a mil or something so this has shifted just over half a mil quite impressive especially with a bigger wheel it just must be this rim design is pretty damn stiff that you can get these spoke tensions pretty high I fully expected that these higher tension spokes on this wheel would have twisted slightly when being built and stamping it would have untwisted them and I, would have, I expected to see more of a change than that so yeah I'm, I'm generally impressed here I was going to try and straighten this out pretty much just that bit there so hopefully it won't take too long there we go that's all it needed yeah super super impressed and of course just like the other wheels i'm not going to touch the front one i'm going to leave it and see if anything changes in a few months but yeah i've got high hopes that they'll be absolutely fine from the factory it doesn't seem like they need any extra stressing i'd love to know what they're doing at light bicycle to stress them because last time i ran a wheel that someone else built it wasn't as good as this but i will add a disclaimer i haven't run a wheel build from any other manufacturers like i said i've built my own wheels for the last 15 years so maybe just wheel builds are better these days but certainly i am impressed with light bicycles so there we go these are the wheels that are breaking my 15 year run of building my own wheels and i'm sure they'll be absolutely fine but even though this is a sponsorship I will be honest if I have any issues. If I go out riding and one explodes, I'm not gonna scrap that video. I'll show it because things do break. I'm yet to break one of these, but nothing is indestructible. Hopefully this was interesting for you guys without it being too much of an advert. That is the issue when you get into the world of sponsorships and vlogs, it is difficult to make stuff without being it too in your face. But I love building wheels. And like I said, I have built my own wheels for 15 years and I'll be really interested to know if i can let someone else build my own wheels from now on because it takes up a lot of time one thing i will mention that i'm really impressed with is the light bicycle website and i'm not saying this i've not been told to say this this is purely my own experience having to use it to find out information about stuff and order these wheels there's just so much information on there so if you are wanting to build wheels it is such a good website so helpful and it should make things really smooth if you want to get your own versions of these. Now these wheels are the last piece of the puzzle I needed to build my new bikes and I can't wait. As soon as this video is done and edited, uh, I don't even know which bike to start with but there's going to be some new bikes on this channel. I've been waiting ages, you've been waiting ages I'm sure and the secret is going to be over soon so yeah, can't wait. Of course, a huge, huge thanks to everyone at Light Bicycle for not only providing me with wheels, but for just being awesome to deal with. Despite being a sponsored rider, I don't run anything that I wouldn't want to run. I don't run parts for a paycheck. I only ever run parts that I would personally choose to, and Light Bicycle rims are products that I choose to ride. Right, I'm going to end it there, guys. Please take a look at the Light Bicycle website. I'd love it if you managed to get your own rims or wheels. Hit me up with some pictures if you do but yeah i just can't wait to edit this video and get my bikes built so i'm going to do that asap have an amazing week and i'll catch you next time bye bye